Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 8, and we'll read starting at verse 4. Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Somebody say amen. amen. There was what? There was great joy in that city. Why? Because God was at work in that city. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. In the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. Let me just say that God's vision for you through the power of the Holy Spirit is greater than your vision. God wants to do greater things than anybody in this church has ever imagined. The enemy is harassing and moving exponentially with darkness Everywhere I look, I see it, I hear it. We all do. We see the powers of darkness just growing and growing in America. But I want you to know that God is not blind, deaf, or dumb to the power of hell. God is in control. The Lord sets above the circle of the earth. He sets on the flood. And however the flood is, God sets on top of the flood. Can I hear an amen? amen? If you don't remember anything else, remember this. The flood never sets on God. God sets on the flood. <laughs> He's in control today. And God has a vision for His church for the last days. And that vision is that every miracle of the New Testament will be replicated right here in 21st century America. America that has forgotten the power of God, has forgotten to preach the Word of God. America that has turned away from the anointing of God and the power and has been turned unto fables and myths. Because of that, Many people have fallen away. Many people, a generation has come now that doesn't even know what the Holy Spirit really is all about. But let me tell you, God sits on the flood and God is ready. He is readying the armies of heaven to move in an unprecedented fashion like we have never seen before. You think you've seen God move? Hold on to your seat. God's getting ready to do the unexpected, the unexplained, things that will blow your mind. God's getting ready to roar from heaven with a power that's been unknown in past generations. No past generation since the book of Acts has seen the power that is coming like God is getting ready to pour out upon America. And not only in America but in a certain place in America. And not only in a certain place but in a certain city, in a certain town, on a certain street, in a certain church. God is not going to pour out this glory on anybody. But it's going to be on those that he has prepared as vessels of honor who have put off the world and put on righteousness who have stood the test of time who have stood the powers withstood the powers of hell who have learned who God is and we are such a people I'm not saying we are the only one of course not I'm just saying that God all over the world is preparing a people and he's getting ready to come with power and unprecedented glory so if you're feeling like giving up I suggest you fight on another day if you're feeling sorry for yourself I suggest you pick your head up out of the dirt and square your shoulders and come out swinging God is on your side hell is defeated and you cannot be denied you cannot be defeated God is for us and if God is for us who dare be against us can I hear an amen today you say pastor you sound excited I am because we've gone through the valley We've gone through the veil of tears. We've gone through the times of testings. We have allowed the Holy Spirit to weed us out, to prune us, to clean us, and to purify us. And we are just about ready to be filled with unprecedented power of the Holy Spirit. It's coming. It 
it's coming. The glory of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, it's coming. It's just around the bend. It's just in tomorrow. It's just ahead of us. It's just above us. It's coming. Turn to somebody and tell them it's coming. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is coming in a grand measure like we have never seen before. And I can tell you that even now this morning, the Holy Spirit is here. If you will release your faith, you will receive. If you will release your faith, you will have everything that you need today. For the demonstration of the Holy Spirit is in this house today. Somebody say amen. You know, it's not like we are just here being defeated and we're waiting for our moment of victory. We are waiting for a moment that's unparalleled in past generations. We're waiting for an unprecedented outpouring of the Spirit. But until then, we're not in any trouble. Until then, we've got God. Until then, we're still filled with the Spirit. Until then, the devil is still backing up and giving territory. Until then, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We have have the victory of God today. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. There's three quick points I want to hit you with today. Number one is the Holy Ghost hits the mark. Sin's definition in the Greek is in the New Testament missing the mark. Well, if sin misses the mark, the Holy Ghost hits the mark. This is why a lot of people don't want the Holy Ghost because he knows where you are. You can fool mom and dad and husband and wife, but you cannot fool the Holy Ghost. He knows what you need. And some of you, when you come to this church, you get under conviction. You try to rejoice, but because your life is missing the mark, the Holy Ghost is constantly convicting you of the mark that you're missing. It's time for us to clean up and to get right and to turn our lives around. It's time for us to hit an altar of repentance. It's time to let the Holy Ghost convict you. Quit running and hiding and dodging and start coming forward and say, it's not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother, not my husband, not my wife. It's me in the need of prayer, O oh Lord. When you let the Holy Ghost convict you, then He can infill you with His power. Hallelujah! The Holy Ghost hits the exact spot. He reproves us of sin. Somebody say amen. He also hits the mark of restoring our soul. David said, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. David was speaking about the power of the Holy Spirit to come in the New Testament. And he's still here today, 21 centuries later. Can I hear an amen? And the Holy Spirit hits the mark in your soul. The things that are torn and bruised. The things that have been lost in your soul. The Holy Ghost is a perfect Giver, giver of life. He's a perfect giver of restoration. He knows how to heal the brokenhearted. He knows how to give you recovery in your, in your brokenness. He knows how to refresh. The, Isaiah 28 says the Holy Spirit when He comes will bring rest and refreshing. He hits the mark every week. Somebody say amen. How many of you know when you come into this church on Sunday, it's like coming to a, to a watering hole. There's fresh water. It's like coming to a refreshing cup of cold ice water that's been purified and you drink it into your soul and you feel rest and you feel refreshed and you feel restored. That's the Holy Spirit. Nobody can do that for you. You can't go to a spa and get that treatment. You can't go get a masseuse to massage you and fix that. That has to be the Holy Spirit that restores the souls of men and women. And brother, after we fought the devil all week, we need to come to the Holy Ghost spa and be filled and refreshed and get our rest in the Lord. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. In Africa they have a saying, no work on Sunday. Let soul catch up with body. In other words, we give one day a week to the Lord so our souls can be restored. Amen. And that's why you're here today, because the Holy Ghost hits the mark. He knows what you need. That's why Paul said in Colossians 1, we are complete in Him. Nothing's lacking. I'm not psychologically torn or bruised or, or out of whack. I am complete in Christ. Body, soul, mind, and spirit. Somebody say man. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Ghost, He hits the mark. He tells you the truth about yourself. 
Somebody say praise the Lord. Recently, I just felt like that I wasn't measuring up, and I just kept coming to the Holy Spirit for several days, saying, Holy Spirit, cleanse me. Holy Spirit, turn the searchlight. Holy Ghost, you know, speak to me and convict me and show me. I just feel like I need to get right. I just feel like I, I want to be correct. I want to be pure. And the Holy Spirit said this to me. He said, my son, you are right. You are correct. You are my beloved. And I said, well, why do I feel this need to keep repenting? He said, because the enemy is accusing you. It's not me convicting you. It's the enemy accusing you. Jesus said he's the accuser of the brethren. He said, don't listen to the enemy. Listen to my spirit. When you get in the presence of the Holy Ghost and you pray in tongues, you listen to what the Holy Ghost says. Amen. You speak out of your spirit and you pray in tongues and you give it to God. And as you speak it out, he's praying through you. But then he's coming back in a cyclical manner, bringing back from heaven what you need to hear in your soul. And when the Holy Ghost is not convicting, don't let the devil accuse you, condemn you. Can I hear an amen for that? That the whole, some of you need that. Some of you need that because you're constantly feeling like, I'm not good enough. I'm not measured up. I'm not perfect. I got news for you. As long as you're in this body, you're not going to be perfect. That's why there's only one thing going to happen to your body. It's going to die. It's got a death sentence on it. Your body as you're living in it now cannot go to heaven. <laughs> you got to have a new body. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I found a picture the other day in my wife's drawer of me when I was in my 20s. Oh, my goodness. 31-inch waist, 165 pounds, broad shoulders, straight, no gray hair, everything in place. Whew. Now it's sagging and bagging and dragging and it's terrible. Oh, Jesus. Somebody say, man. My dad used to say the three signs of old age. Bifocals, bunions, and goofies. And I'd say, what? And he'd say, deafness. You'll get it in a minute. Amen. The Holy Ghost hits the mark. Number two. The Holy Ghost has a mouth. And the Lord spoke this to me. He said, the enemy is not afraid of the Holy Spirit in the earth. God sent the Holy Spirit to the earth. And the enemy of your soul is not afraid of the Holy Spirit in this earth. He is afraid of the Holy Spirit in you. Because only when the Holy Spirit gets in human beings does the Holy Spirit have a mouth. I am the mouthpiece of the third part of the Trinity. And when I pray in tongues, I'm tearing down the devil's kingdom. I'm tearing up his playhouse. And I'm doing it in code. The devil's going, huh? Huh? What? I don't like that. I don't know what you're saying, but I don't like the tenor of that. I don't like that. Let me tell you, the devil is intimidated, even fearful, of Holy Ghost praying people. The Holy Ghost coming, the Holy Ghost needs a mouth. The mouth of the Holy Spirit. He is afraid of the Holy Spirit coming out of someone's mouth. New Testament Christianity is praying in tongues, speaking as the Holy Ghost gives us a word. Tongues contradict the devil and they expose his schemes and announce the kingdom of God. Somebody say, Amen. Satan is afraid. He's intimidated by the tongue that is spoken by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's why he is so dead set against the Holy Spirit in the church. He doesn't mind liturgy. He doesn't mind messages. He doesn't like, mind songs. He just hates the Holy Ghost in the church. And he tells all kinds of lies about it. Oh, it died out with the apostles. Oh, it was just for that original occasion. They spoke and testified of God in their languages so they could all understand the gospel. It didn't say they preached to him. It said they glorified God in their different languages. 
And the Holy Ghost falls again and again in the book of Acts. In the house of Cornelius, the Holy Ghost falls. So if it was only for the disciples one time, what happened there? Oops, God made a mistake. He fell again and he fell again. No, God didn't make a mistake. But the Holy Spirit is given as power in the believer to harass and take ground from the enemy of our soul. And the devil is afraid of the Holy Spirit. He does not want it to be up front and center. He wants to intimidate preachers through carnal people who don't want the Holy Spirit because they don't want the Holy Ghost to hit the mark of the sin in their life. And so they move him out. They say, oh, you can't speak in tongues. Oh, if you do, you do an afterglow service. You do it in another room. You do it another time. Anything except to let the Holy Spirit have precedence and preeminence. We've made a chair for Him today. We've sung a song of invitation. And the Holy Ghost is here today. And I can tell you He's already hit the mark in every person. And He's already encouraged many people. He's already told you that the devil is a liar. He's already told you that heaven is on your side. Somebody say amen. And He wants to fill your mouth so that out of your your mouth can come words that destroy the plan and the work of the devil. Somebody say, man. You don't think the devil is intimidated? Listen to Acts chapter 6 and verse 10. The Holy Ghost fell in Acts 2 and four chapters later it says when Stephen was speaking that he was standing before the Sanhedrin and they were interrogating him And as they were interrogating him, why? Because he had been doing miracles and signs and wonders and they got upset over the miracles, signs and wonders. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Lord has been preparing me recently saying, Son, get ready. You're going to come under attack. When I send my glory and I start doing miracles on the scale that I have promised this church, you will come under attack. Look at the book of Acts. It's our example. Are you ready for the attacks? They're going to call us everything except people of God. Fakes and fanatics. Anything else they can come up with. And they did the same thing with Stephen. But I love what happened in chapter 6 of Acts and verse 10. It says they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Do you hear what I said? They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. You said, boy, the devil is fighting me and standing up against me. Then get fuller of the Holy Ghost. Get so filled with the Holy Ghost that the devil cannot withstand. He cannot resist the wisdom and the spirit by which you speak. There is an anointing that's so powerful that it will overrun the enemy. I wish somebody else was excited over this as I am. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What did Jesus say in Luke 21, 15? He said, I, he's talking to his disciples, I will give you a mouth and wisdom by which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Come on. Some of you have been fighting with things in the flesh and your mouth has been running against people and the situations and well, I don't like this and you're on my last nerve and I ain't thinking you. Why don't you shut up? That's never going to change it. All you're doing is making a bigger mess. Why don't you pray in the Holy Ghost over that situation? Pray until you get so full of the Spirit that the devil can't stop what God is going to do. You can have authority in the Holy Spirit over every work of the enemy. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, amen. Amen. And number three is the power of the Holy Ghost. The power. First of all, he hits the mark. Secondly, he's got a mouth and he wants to speak through your mouth. Number three, he wants to demonstrate power through you. Through you. He wants to use your hands to heal the sick. He wants to use your mouth to cast out devils. It's not just preachers that have authority over the devil. The believers have authority over the devil. Nothing shall be able to stand against us. I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents. And over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means harm you and hurt you. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Freely you've received. Freely give. Heal the sick. Jesus sent the disciples out and said, when you go, heal the sick. 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 Didn't say pray for him. Said heal him. Let the power of God flow through you. Well, I'm not sure. That's why it won't flow. You don't have any faith.